Good morning, everyone. Mark is ready for page 33 to 36 of Anna of the Kingdom this morning. <clears throat> is that? Whenever he's finished, all you have to do is click on that one time. Here you go, Mark. Thank you. Man of the Kingdom, page 33 through 36. It argues ill for professing Christians when they are not hated and persecuted. The world loves their own. The world loves being, the world loves belong to the world and not to Christ. Those who love the world and are friends to the world are God's enemies. James 4, 4, 1, 1 John 2, 15. We are not hated, reviled, and persecuted by the world, and let us not commit the folly of claiming to be Christians. But the world can never harm the Christian. The Christian is the kingdom of is in the, the Christian is in the kingdom of Christ, where all things are cared for with a wondrous and infinite care. Particular providence attends the Christian and guards his every step. Let the world kill him; it matters not. This only ushers him in him into heaven. God is sovereign over the world. He is king of the whole universe. Men can do nothing but what God allows them to do. The world is defeated in me. In the world you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16.33 These words were spoken by our Lord shortly before his terrible and agonizing death on the cruel tree. Soon rough hands seized him, placed upon his head a crown of thorns, and smote it down with a reed. They put a scarlet robe upon him and mocked him, saying, Hail, hey, King of the Jews, while his blood streamed down from the thorny crown. They reviled him and spit in his face. His lovely face for glory was ever wont to dwell. He gave his back to the smiters and his cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. The world seized him as a criminal, judged him a malefactor, and hailed him the cross of his shame. And they crucified him. They stripped him naked and nailed his hands and his feet to the cross. They parted his garments, casting lots upon his vesture, while his life slowly ebbed away. They stared to scorn and bitter hatred. Those who passed by reviled him, wagging their heads sagely and saying wisely, Save thyself, thou be the Son of God, and come down from the cross. The chief priest said he saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross. He will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. If he will have him, he said, I am the son of God. Suddenly at noonday, darkness failed the sky. A strange darkness neither day nor night. All light failed. The sun grew pale in mid hyphen heaven and faded in midnight darkness. The stars grew in shade and ceased from the shine. The angels heaven veiled their face with their wings, and mute with all stopped seeing. So died the Son of God for three hours, for three long hours of darkness prevailed, pangs of death ceased upon the Savior. His life was poured out like water. His strength dried up like a pot shirt. Thirsty, he was given vinegar and gall to increase his thirst, and while his fever mounted, his tongue swelled and cleaved to his jaws. He tasted the dust, the dust of death. All his bones were out of joint, sundered one from another. His heart like wax melted in the midst of his bowels. At the ninth hour, in the midst of the thrones of the throes of, great, of death, forth from his pallid lips came and cried, "My God, My God, why hast thou forsaken me, naked, forsaken and alone?" Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple of Jesus, went to Pilate, stood humbly, and begged the body of Jesus. After making sure Jesus was dead, Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. Jesus took the body of Jesus down from the cross wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. Pilate had the tomb sealed and set up a watch upon it. And so the deed was done. Was it a tragedy? It was not. Did not the world triumph? They did not. This thing was ordained. This thing was foreordained before the foundation of the world. First Peter one twenty. Him being delivered by the determinate council. 
foreknowledge of God you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, Acts 2.23. Being the kingdom of the Lord, and he is the governor among the nations, they shall come and shall declare his righteousness to the people that shall be born. That he hath done this, Psalms 22.28-31. Then wicked hands are made to reform the determinate counsel of the Lord. Sure, the wrath of man shall praise thee, the remainder of wrath shall thou restrain, Psalms 76.10. When they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, "Lord, thou art God which has made, Lord, thou art God which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up. The rulers were gathered together against the Lord, against His Christ, for the truth against thy holy child Jesus." who thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles, the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined for to be done, Acts 4, 24-28. Then God's hand and God's counsel determined the affairs of that day. Then with all their rage and all their freedom and choice, they did exactly what God had already determined to be done. With all their power, they were able to do nothing else. For they that dwelt in Jerusalem and their, and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which were read every Sabbath day, they fulfilled them and condemned him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher, Acts 13:27 through 30 then try as they may, men can only fulfill the scriptures. Only when they have fulfilled all that was written of him could they take him could take they could they of him could they take Christ down from the tree, then there is no literal interpretation of the scriptures. They were perfectly familiar with them. The scriptures copied them, wrote them meticulously. The chief priests read and interpreted them, all heard them read every Sabbath day. They knew the letter, but not the spirit. They heard the words, but not the voices of the prophets. Okay, stop this.